What up boys and welcome back to yet another video. So in today's video we're doing something slightly different, something that I used to do back in the day, kind of like a Q&A thing. Uh, it's the most frustrating questions that my viewers are, uh, are ans asking me like constantly and that is basically why they're not getting any gold, how come that they see me and everyone else uh, doing these farms, people in the comments section cheering about making so much gold and they're not making jack shit, right? So that's what I'm going to talk about today, mainly uh, a bit about how materials and the transmog works in forms of sales, like why you're not getting sales, why you're not making as much as everyone else, and hopefully it will be a helpful video to a lot of you guys. Uh, so first of all, transmog, since I'm on my transmog posting too and I'm posting right now, there's a lot of people checking out my videos, my cleanout videos, uh, new farms that I upload that's transmog related, and they try it out, they don't get sales, they give up, they're like, fake video student, this sucks, right? And uh, a part of me gets kind of frustrated because it's like, I show my mailbox cleanout, I show that transmog sells, right? A lot of content creators do. And if you go into my, my live stream on Twitch TV, you can see everyone that's deep into gold making, they're making gold on roughly the same stuff that I make gold on. So how come that these individuals uh, refuses to believe that there is gold to be made? My guess is they probably don't realize um, like how Transmog works and why they're not getting any sales. Because unlike what they're used to farming, which is probably anything that's current content related, the sell rate is dog shit. That's the harsh truth. Transmog items have a very bad sell rate on average, right? So it's very common for a transmog item uh, to have a sell rate of 0 0.01, where you should on average sell that item once every 100 days. If you had no competition, you should sell it on average once every 100 days. Sounds like a living hell, right? Now, imagine if you then do one of the farms that I feature on my channel, and you might be left with 5, 10, 15 items from that farm. Now, if you have 10 items that should sell on average once every 100 days, you should sell an item every 10 days, right? If you have 100 items and they all have the same sell rate, they should sell on average every 100 days, you should sell one item a day. If you have 1,000, 10, and like so on, right? But that is without any competition. And there's a lot of competition with Transmog. So if you post, uh, let's say, above a thousand items and you do undercut scans and uh, you, you just do cancel scans in general, you will drastically see an increase in sales. The people that I know that makes literal millions upon millions of gold daily with Transmog, they do nothing but like do constant undercut scan always because there's a lot of people buying transmog it's just that there's a lot of people posting transmog as well so for instance when i post my transmog right now i can go back two hours later do an undercut scan and 85 percent of the items have already been undercutted so there's two ways of dealing with that uh, option number a is sitting on the auction house doing uh, undercut scans. It doesn't matter if you can't do it constantly, but if you can do an undercut scan a day, that's going to be way better than doing none. If you can do it twice a day, even better. You will get pretty much double the sales, right? That's pretty much how it works. You need, you won't make any gold with transmog unless you have a lot of transmog. You got to increase your chance of getting sales by having a big variety of different transmog items. And you also need to uh, make sure that you do undercut scans or cancel scans. Unless you're like me and you have like 2,800 transmog items, you just post it and pray to God that someone is going to buy your items before you get undercut. Or that whoever undercuts you sells their auctions, so now your auction is first on the list to be bought. And that is the harsh truth with transmog. You can't just run one dungeon, two dungeon, three dungeons and expect to make gold. Like, if you can't commit and you cannot either spend a lot of time farming transmog or a combination of spending time and gold in order to craft transmog as well, it's not the way for you to make gold. It is time consuming. The reason why people are doing it, especially farmed transmog, 
is because it's, for most people, the most enjoyable way of making gold. Because it's based on RNG. You can go into a dungeon like Ulderman and you can make jack shit or you can get lucky with drops and get transmog items worth literal millions because they're super items. So that is the main reason why people don't make a lot of gold with transmog. And there's probably someone that needs to hear this and maybe they will quit... Uh, dealing with transmog and that could be the right call because it's just not for them right like for instance when a new expansion comes out i'm not posting my transmog which is it, it sounds strange but that is because i make more gold per hour farming in the new current content than i would do spending the time posting my mocks it takes almost two hours to post my transmog items and when a new expansion hits if I can make an average of 250,000 gold an hour, 500k an hour, yes, the numbers are insane if you include epic BWEs and so on at the start of an expansion. Let's say 500k, 400k. I'm not going to make that with one post of my transmog. So it's actually not worth it to post the transmog items. I would have to play on both my accounts, post on one while I farm on the other. And uh, my computer is sadly not good for that. Uh, so yeah, transmog farming is not for everyone. Transmog crafting, on the other hand, should be uh, your main focus over farm and transmog because instead of just constantly refilling your oak shells with farm and transmog, which is very time-consuming, you can just put down the time and the gold in uh, the start to get the professions up, learn all the patterns on the plants and so on, and then it's super easy and super fast to just keep on restocking with crafted mogs. All of that is included in the 0 to 10 million gold guy. Like everything that I'm talking about now. Everything and how to get started with crafted transmog farm, transmog and all of that is in the book. But there is a reason why the book doesn't start with crafted and farm transmog. And that is because it's way easier if you have a capital. So now we're going to talk a bit about materials and the most common issues with materials. And um, I'm talking mainly about old content materials because that's what I do personally, because the gold per hour is higher when it eventually sells. Even though current content lower gold per hour, but higher sell rate, so you will pretty much see a return on your time investment way faster, right? So, but some of this can be uh, also uh, used uh, when we're talking about current content uh, materials. But the most... The most common issue that I see when people are farming uh, old content materials is the fact that they accept a low price, right? It's a big issue. A lot of people get burnt on that one. So what I mean by accepting a low price is, uh, let's say that you're super happy because you joined a farming group, a five-man farm in my Discord channel, and you're going to go out and farm yourself some uh, primal fire, for instance, right? Now... You do it for an hour, you're left with like 90 to 100 primals. Now, the pro boys, they're going to go on the auction house, they're going to check the price, and they're going to be like, shit, it's uh, 700 gold. I'm going to post it, I'm happy with 70,000 gold an hour. And then you go on your realm, and you're like, god damn, my realm is so bad. They're only posted for 299, and then you're not going to touch Primal Fire. Like, nah, screw that shit, I'm not going to play around with the, this low gold per hour. And if you check the, the quantity on the auction house, there might be one clown posting five primal fires for 299, and the rest is just uh, 700, 800 gold each. Or there might only be five on the auction house in total. So you should never accept a low price. You should do all these farms, all the material farms, know your realm. You can check the statistics, how much they normally sell for. You can go on the Undermine Journal, check historical prices. Uh, soon enough you will learn all these numbers in your head like i know how much i can sell every single old content uh, material for on my realm so i never accept a low price there's no point the whole point is to do all the farms that should net you a good uh, gold per hour because of what to use for and accelerate and what so and if the price is too low and there's too many posted you should just wait it out just store it in your bank and monitor the price and post it when the price is high if there's only a couple on the auction house, like, you're better off just buying out the cheap ones and then posting your total stack for uh, way more. That's the biggest issue with uh, materials, that people accept the price. Some people don't even do a farm because they check the price before they go ahead and do the farm. Like, 
I never look at the price of any of the old content materials. I just go out and I do it. And when I'm done with the farm, if the price is still bad, then screw it, man. I'm just going to wait until the price goes up. And it works like a charm. So that's also one of the topics that I'm uh, talking about in the book, like just never accepting um, a low price. Second of all, it's the same thing as I talked about with Transmog. So when you're used to farming current content materials and you're used to them selling fast, like they fly off the auction house, the only thing you have to do is post them on the auction house and that's it. You don't have to worry about it. If they don't sell instantly, then we'll, they will sell in like 20 minutes, right? Like no biggie. When the, the next big shark comes out and buy a bunch of materials, he will buy yours too. It's not biggie. Like if you get undercut, doesn't really matter. But with old materials, the sell rate will naturally be lower, but not to the point where they can be... Uh, associated with the sell rate of transmog no 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 like these are way more in demand than transmog items themselves the materials because they're used for such a big variety of different things right but you should still treat old materials like you treat transmog you should farm a ton of different stuff so you always have something available a big variety i mean it's pretty natural right if you have five different materials you're not going to make as much gold as if you had 15 different materials. Now, let's say that you farmed 20 old school mats and you just stored them in your bank and only posted them when the price was going up, when it was a good price. Uh, you'll make so much more gold. So that's something that I always do. You probably saw that when I did my series here on YouTube on following the, uh, the Zero to 10 Million Gold Guide, doing only farms in the book. And I would just constantly do everything that was in the book, but I would refuse to sell any materials unless the price was good. The only um, exception was towards the end when I was at like seven or eight million. And I just, I knew that I had like, I had an inventory that was worth like five million. So it didn't really matter. I could sell it cheap and I could reach 10 million gold faster. And I reached uh, 10 million gold in seven weeks, playing like four or five hours a day. And that was using these tactics. So that's pretty much what this video was about. Hopefully, I'm not sure if you guys like this format of a video. Please uh, let me know down below in uh, the comment section. And if you did and you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to my YouTube channel and you will be notified whenever I upload a new video. But that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you all in tomorrow's video. And don't forget, there's no stupid questions. Leave your questions down below. And I will do my absolute best to answer every single one of them. But until then, have a good one. Bye-bye.